Welcome to the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. ABC Sports College Football presents the CFA, and today it's a battle in the Southeastern Conference between the Gators of the University of Florida and the Georgia Bulldogs. It is raining right here in Jacksonville now, but nothing like it was raining less than a half hour ago. This was the scene here as a major storm system has moved through the Jacksonville area. Well, it depends upon who you believe, how many times they've played. Georgia says this is the second, 72nd version. Florida says the 71st. Important to the folks here, though, that Florida has won the last three games under coach Steve Spurrier. Moments ago, here come the Gators of Florida as they take the field here at the Gator Bowl. Led by coach Steve Spurrier. And it is a wet, soggy field and live. Here come the Bulldogs. On second down again, it's Eric Rett. This time getting to the outside. He does, dies for the end zone, and he gets it. Eric Rett, a touchdown for Florida. A nine-yard run, and what an effort to break the plane in the end zone. They did get three yards for one of their better plays of the day, and there's another ball. Johnson, number 61, the Gator player that comes up with the football. And that appeared to be a fumbled exchange between Zyre and his center Weeks. Eric Zyre wants to reverse out and toss a pitch to his tailback. He's reversing out to his left, and he never gets full control of the football. You can see it down on the football on the field. Ellis Johnson, number 61, defensive tackle is lining up. He spotted the miscue and jumped on the football. Terry Dean still a quarterback for Florida. And this time he goes deep. He's got a man open. And it's a Florida touchdown, Harrison Houston. Wow, talk about coming back. Here we go third down and goal to go on the one yard line 21 seconds left in the third quarter play number 20 of this Florida drive Eric Rett he's in for the touchdown oh and here comes a flag you saw it thrown right there nine minutes and three seconds and counting here at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm Dan Deardorff. John Spagnola is alongside. And this has been a fun ball game. Surprise. Eric Rett again. And look at him break tackles. And Eric Rett is into the open. And Carlos Yancey, the last Bulldog that had a shot at him, got him. Again. No timeouts for Georgia. 13 seconds left. That'll bring up second and 10. Well, you have to look back on the two missed field goals that have hurt Georgia now and the fact that they absolutely have to get the football in the end zone. And then they'll make the decision about whether to go for two or not. But Ron Zook has been on a lot of pressure, especially the last couple of weeks, trying to get his defensive secondary to play well. And he'll take anything at this point. An interception, a batted ball. You don't let anybody be. No, you don't. Will rush three, drop eight. Eric Zire works the middle of the field. Is it a catch? Yes, it is. With seven seconds, the clock will stop. That's a first down. Hassan Graham. And Zyre will almost certainly kill the ball. He does. Five seconds left. And Georgia gets one play. Well, how's this for a finish to a ball game? 82,000 people on hand here at the Gator Bowl. And... I do not see a lot of traffic on the roads outside. I don't think anybody's left. Well, you got to trying to get everybody off the field. Florida's got 
some personnel confusion. Here's the ball game, folks. It's a touchdown for Georgia. Jerry German. We've got a flag on the field. There is a flag on the field. If it's against Florida, the touchdown stands. Timeout being called by Florida, and now you have to wonder if Ray Goff is going to go for two points. Timeout, Florida. Florida's taking a timeout. Jerry German on a slant over the middle. Kind of a post route, and Eric Zier fired that ball right in there for the touchdown. Well, that play started with five seconds. There's, we need an explanation from Dick Burleson here. The touchdown has not been posted on the board. It appears. Uh, the Florida defender calls timeout. You there can see is. the timeout is called right before the play, and that play yeah. was negated. There was no play because of a Florida timeout. That Good play. job picking that up. Yeah, that play never took place. There was no indication. There was a flag initially on the field. That was Anthony Lott, which yeah. may be his biggest defensive play of the year. Well, here we go again. Georgia, the last play of the game. Zire to the end zone. That out of bounds. Oh, that's Anthony Lott, the Florida defender, working on Hassan Graham. And this is as goofy an ending to a football game as you're going to see. Well, if it is pass interference, it'll be half the distance to the goal line. And Georgia will get one more play with no time on the clock. It cannot end. A game cannot end with a defensive penalty. Anthony Lott involved in two plays, two very strange plays with the timeout. And watch, uh, Zaire's trying to get the ball to his receiver in the end zone. That's Hassan Graham. And there's a little pushing and shoving, yep. enough to get a flag. Well, Lott's playing the receiver, not playing the ball at all. That's a well, fatal error. But you... yes, yes, now, Lott's going. arguing that the ball could not have been caught in bounds. Well, an interesting there's point there. The official down. who was right on it did not throw the flag. That came in from behind. It came in from the line judge or the head linesman. You're right, because the side judge over there did not throw the flag. He might have been looking at feet and hands on the reception and not the interference. Okay, let's set this up. No time left on the clock. One play for Georgia from the two-yard line. In the shotgun is Zaire. He goes to the end zone. Incomplete attempting for Jeff Thomas. Florida wins the ball game. 33 to 26. After an apparent touchdown to Jeff Thomas, negated because Florida had called a timeout right before the snap. Jeff Thomas was open on this play. The ball was just thrown behind him, and you can see Eric Zier agonized because he had an open receiver on that play. 